Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. The Dilver Demon The following is a fictionalized story based on an alleged encounter in April of 1977 in Dover, Massachusetts. The names of the people involved, as well as some de details, have been changed. The night was cold. Flurries drifted aimlessly through the air, gently landing on the windshield of 17-year-old Sam Barnhill's car. He had just left a birthday party for his friend. While there, Sam realized that being a senior in high school and having a traditional birthday party thrown by his friend's mom was a little odd. These were the kind of birthday parties that needed to be had at a bowling alley or movie theater, not a house with party favors. They were too old for that now. Those thoughts aside, however, Sam still wondered what was in the zip-tied party favor bag on the passenger seat next to him. He hoped for some kind of chocolate. Chocolate was a craving he could never shake. The quiet in the car, compared to the pop music that had played relentlessly at the party, was too obvious to ignore. Sam reached down and turned the dial on the dash to bring music through the car stereo. He couldn't do pop again, so he turned it to the rock station. The drums were pounding, the guitars wailed, and the singer let out an emotional howl. Sam looked up from the radio and back at the road. The flurries were starting to come down a little faster now. He flipped on the windshield wipers and cringed as they smeared the snow across the glass, blurring his view. Through the blur, he could see a broken stone wall that lined the road. It was a landmark of sorts that he had always remembered from when he was a kid. He'd be in the back seat of his parents' car, and whenever he saw the stone wall out his window, he knew that there was an upcoming curve in the road which would then take them through a stretch of woods and eventually to the road that his house was on. Sam sat forward, squinting through the glass. He couldn't afford to smash his car into a rock wall. This was his dad's car, after all, and Sam couldn't even imagine the wrath that would ensue. Sam saw the shoulder lines on the road start to curve and turned the wheel slightly with it. The world around him seemed to grow darker. Or maybe it was just his imagination building anxiety. With his left hand, he flipped on the brights. The halogen bulbs on the front of his car exploded into blinding beams of light, lighting up the stone wall ahead of him. The light reflected off of something perched upon the wall near the edge of the tree line. Sam squinted again through the rapidly waving wipers and blurry windshield. He couldn't make out what was on the wall. A small animal, perhaps? A child? As his car continued to turn with the curve, Sam was able to get a better view now. Now it did look like a child, or a small person, but it was completely white, glowing within the bright lights from his car. It had long, tendril-like fingers and toes that gripped the broken stones. Its head was oval-shaped, like a watermelon sitting upright on the thing's bony shoulders. As Sam continued to drift around the bend, he looked out the passenger side window just as the strange little creature turned and tilted its head like it was looking back at him. It had two large eyes that seemed to radiate an orange glow. Sam's jaw dropped. He had never seen anything like it in his life. It almost looked like… The car hit a slick patch on the road and swerved violently. Sam faced forward and grabbed the wheel tightly with both hands and slammed on the brakes. The car locked up and slid sideways, blasting hard into the rock wall before falling completely still. 
Sam caught his breath and turned off the music. His first thought was of his father yelling at him for reckless driving. His second thought was of the strange creature on the rock wall. Sam turned around in his seat and looked out the back window. Illuminated by the red brake lights, he could see the rock wall disappear into the darkness of the curve in the road behind him. Nothing sat upon the wall now. Sam grabbed a flashlight from the glove compartment and stepped out of the car. The cold air hit his face, instantly turning his cheeks red. He breathed heavily, watching his breath puff out in front of him. He clicked the flashlight on as he slowly walked behind his car, keeping the beam of light trained on the stone wall where he had seen the unknown creature. He scanned the wall as far as the flashlight would let him see, but he still saw nothing. The wind started to pick up, howling eerily as it sent the falling snow into a chaotic frenzy. Sam continued to slowly approach the stone wall. When he got close enough, he rested his hand on one of the cold stones. He looked up to the dark woods and aimed his light into them. It barely penetrated the thickness of the forested region. Suddenly, he heard a wet slap on the pavement not far away. Sam's heart nearly ripped out of his chest as he snapped his attention to his right. He aimed his flashlight, but saw nothing. Then a series of wet slaps erupted behind him. He spun around, his beam of light landing on the creature again, skittering across the road on all fours like a prancing cat. Sam gasped and his entire body went numb. The cold he felt was gone, now replaced by the fluttering warmth of anxious fear. He followed the creature with his light as it crossed the road and then stopped. It turned around, stood up on its back legs and curiously stared at Sam, the light bouncing off its eyes like bike reflectors. Sam began to tremble, his teeth chattering against one another. The creature continued to stare. As small as it was, it was intimidating and didn't make any sense. Sam couldn't explain what he was seeing, and that's what scared him the most. He was looking at something that couldn't possibly exist. Then, out of nowhere, the creature dropped back down on all fours and scampered off into the woods on the other side of the road. Sam could do nothing but stand there, completely baffled and frightened by what he witnessed. Sure, the creature didn't seem to be a physical or violent threat, but just the sheer existence of it was the scary part. If something like that was real, what else could be? Sam called the police to report his accident. When they asked him what happened, Sam told the officer the road was slick, but he was distracted by something he saw sitting on the rock wall. He told the officer of the small, humanoid creature with a large head and two glowing eyes. The officer took the report, but with a smirk. What is this? The officer chuckled. Some sort of widespread prank? Sam cocked his head, confused by the officer's statement. What do you mean? We had a similar report from another kid about your age an hour ago. Carter Gamble, I think his name was. Sam didn't know who that was. Another report of that thing? Yeah, the officer laughed. Anything to get out of admitting fault to an accident, huh? Did Carter tell you to spin this nutty tale, too? I don't even know who that is. Sam said. What about Missy Fisher? Do you know her? She's in your age group, too. She reported something similar last night. She said it followed her home like a cat or something. Sam shook his head. I don't know her, he mumbled quietly. Within the hour, Sam's car was towed to a local body shop. His father came to pick him up from the scene where he scoffed at the story Sam told him. His father wasn't one to believe such fantastical things, but neither was Sam, not until he was put in the situation. Now he didn't know what to believe. When they got home, Sam retreated to his bedroom with his tail between his legs. His father was mad and his mother didn't understand why he would make up such a story. Exactly, Sam thought. Why would I make up a story like that? I have nothing to gain from it. Whether or not he was believed by his parents, Sam knew what he saw, and now 
he knew that two other people had seen it too. It was real. There was something very strange lurking out there in the cold Dover nights. Sitting down at his desk, Sam flipped on a light. He pulled out a sheet of paper along with a pen. He sketched an image of what he saw. An oval head with two large eyes resting atop a small, frail body. Its fingers and toes were longer than they should have been. Sam pushed the sketch away and looked at it as he sat back in his seat. He studied it, as so many people did after him. The mysterious visitor, which came to be known as the Dover Demon, was never seen again after that. It has baffled the community and the world ever since its brief appearance in Dover, Massachusetts. Was it the ghost of a small child? A species unknown to, known to modern science? An extraterrestrial that had lost, lost its way? In the case of the Dover Demon, every possibility could, could be the definitive answer. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors – Scary Stories for Kids. Micro Terrors 10 Scary Stories for Kids Volume 1 is now available. It includes 10 stories originally heard on the podcast, including The Creeping Ghost, Space Monster, Computer Crash, Starved for Detention, and more, plus two horrific tales written by young Micro Terrors listeners. Micro Terrors 10 Scary Stories for Kids Volume 1 is available on Kid or in paperback at microterrors.com. The Nightmares of Edgar Allan Poe The Terrors of Bram Stoker The Monsters of Mary Shelley the Suspense of Alfred Hitchcock The Thrill of Robert Louis Stevenson And the Horror of the Blancheville Monster It all culminates in The Horror of the Blancheville Monster In a sinister, unreal birthday celebration only the flashes of madness pierce the darkness of the castle in the Blancheville Monster. Mysterious cries, fatal omens, nefarious vices, chilling presences, the Blancheville Monster. A dark path where the specter of death rides. A woman caught in the snare of a monstrous, fatal spell. The spell of the Blancheville Monster. Does the coffin contain a creature snatched from life by a curse? Will anyone be able to unravel the mysteries of the Blancheville Monster and the wicked deeds of the Children of Darkness? The satanic storm of terrors, nightmares, and sadistic violence. The Blancheville Monster. 
Our May Weirdo Watch Party is Saturday, May 6th, with horror host Lee Turner from After Hours presenting 1963's The Blancheville Monster, where a beautiful young daughter of a crazed count fears that she will fall victim to the family curse to be sacrificed to fulfill an ancient family legend, borrowing elements from Edgar Allan Poe's Fall of the House of Usher and Some Words with a Mummy. Originally filmed in the Italian language, it was titled Horror, but we'll be watching the well-done English dubbed version entitled The Blancheville Monster. The Weirdo Watch Party is always free to watch online with everybody, so grab your popcorn, candy, and soda and jump into the fun and even get involved in the live chat as we watch the movie. Again, The Weirdo Watch Party is Saturday, May 6th, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Pacific. You can see a trailer for the film on the Weirdo Watch Party page at WeirdDarkness.com. And we'll see you Saturday, May 6th, for the Blancheville Monster. Coming up May 19th through the 21st, it is my biggest horror convention of the year. It's Spooky Empire in Orlando, Florida. This is an event you'll want to travel to no matter where you live in North America. Vendors, costume and cosplay contests, artists of creepy constructions, a tattoo festival with daily awards for the best tattoos, but most of all, non-stop Q&A sessions and autograph signings with numerous horror celebrities from your favorite movies and TV shows all three days, including Danny Lloyd, who played the young Danny Torrance in The Shining, Butch Patrick, who was Eddie Munster from The Munsters, Paul Wiley in the cast from the Terrifier films, Alyssa Sutherland from the new Evil Dead Rise, Lynn Shea from Insidious and Nightmare on Elm Street, Heather Matarazzo from Scream, and many, many more. They're even having me interview and conduct the Q&A for the Godzilla King of the Monsters panel. Plus, in her only U.S. appearance all year from Stranger Things, Millie Bobby Brown is there on Saturday. And immediately after Millie's time on stage, I'll be on that same stage talking about podcasting, how I create character voices, and I'll also be reading Edgar Allan Poe's Telltale Heart live in front of the crowd, along with my own Q&A afterwards. It's Spooky Empire in Orlando, Florida, May 19th, 20th, and 21st. Get the details on the road trip page at WeirdDarkness.com. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash road trip. Hey Weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.